Hi guys and welcome back to Adam's Aquatics. In today's video it's going to be another vlog style video and we're just going to go through the ins and outs in the fish room this week as well as doing a live feeding for you guys. So I'm going to take you around as I feed the fish room this morning and show them exactly what I'm feeding. So I'm feeding live food this morning so I'm going to be feeding live black worms and I'm also going to be feeding baby brine shrimp. Okay so these are live black worms. They come in little pouches like this. Uh, so how do I prepare them to feed them? Um, I open them, I, rip, I get rid of all the water um, I tip it all outside uh, and then I uh, rinse them off in tap water, in um, tank water, um, which I'm about to do. Uh, I'm going to do that and I do that because these guys are raised in uh, sewer water uh, and you don't want to be feeding that to your fish basically. So uh, I'm just going to do that now uh, and then we'll come back and they will be in this pot. So I wash them through until the water becomes clear. Uh, it's that simple really. Just keep washing them, keep washing them, keep washing them until the water runs clear and then you should be okay to feed them. Now this is three packets because I'm going to be feeding quite a lot of the fish to these black worms uh, and then uh, I'll show you how to harvest uh, the baby brine shrimp. So over here is my brine shrimp pad for trees. Uh, you turn the air off, so I turn the air off at this valve here and then I place this light here which should then attract all of the brine shrimp that's here all the way down to here. And brine shrimp are uh, attracted to light and then you, when they're all at the bottom you then just pull this valve off this here and then just squirt it into the cup. Um, so I have one cup for black worms, one cup for uh, brine shrimp, um, and then I'll go around and I'll feed them. So whilst I'm waiting for the brine shrimp to uh, collect at the bottom, let me just give you a quick update on what's going on in the fish room this week. So we added a new fish to this tank, and we added an Epistogramma Inca 50 or Benshi. Um, he is around somewhere. I'm going to try and get some video of him for you guys. Uh, he's settled in really well to this tank. Obviously, he's not the dom dominant male um, because this guy is. But um, he's in here. He's settled in fine. Um, he, he likes to sk not skulk about, but he likes to uh, hide and, and, you know, he comes out for food. So when I feed, you'll, you'll definitely see him, and I'll point him out when I feed this tank. And the only other real thing to talk about is these two. Um, so I did a big water change on these guys last week and he basically just beat the crap out of her, which you can see on her side there. Um, so they're currently being medicated for um, fungus as well as I've put quite a lot of um, salt in there to help with the wounds. Um, he's also quite beat up from her. So hopefully, I've also turned the temperature down now because I think that the increase in temperature is what's caused him to go a bit breeding crazy so turn the temp down in the tank um, should help to um, lower the aggression in him and hopefully he'll they'll both get better in time they're both swimming fine they're both acting okay so it's not really an issue when it comes to their behavior so I'm not too worried about them being a serious illness it's just um, superficial wounds and I removed the breeder box from this tank here. So the Epistogramma Elizabethy red female that was being medicated last week, because she sustained some very serious injuries, um, didn't make it. So um, I have then repurposed that tank for second stage grout for these guys. And they've been growing really well in this tank. Um, I've been really happy with them. Again, they're still getting baby brine shrimp. I might try some black worms for these guys, but I think they're a bit too big for these guys at the moment. So we're just gonna just continue to feed these guys brine uh, until they get a little bit bigger, uh, and then they'll go into a bigger tank um, for the final stage of grout. Uh, I've also decided that we're gonna condemn the um, black grout tote once the uh, four uh, normal master I finish growing out, because I'm gonna use that for an outdoor pond. That's the current thought process behind that. Also, we had some fry from um, our Ocelot's Gold, which are in the grout totes, which is why you might be wondering why we weren't using these guys for uh, the growing out of the other guys. But yeah, we've got some grow out. They're in here. There's four or five. Let's see if I can get some video of some of them for you. They're normally hiding underneath the sponge, there you go. There's four or five in here, and they like to hide underneath the sponge, and they'll come out for food when I feed them, so we'll show you them then. 
and that is uh, my harvest of baby brine. That's a lot of baby brine. May have overdone it, but what I normally do is um, I will then keep the rest of what I don't feed alive using this air stone over here, this bottle. So it's not a problem. So I, I, and then I'll, that's what I'll feed for my third time is to today. So I'll do one feeding now, which is the first thing in the morning, and then the second time I will feed them uh, with this guy, but it will be the same one. So I do like I said, and like I said on my most recent fish room tour video, I uh, do one. Uh, big batch one small batch that's the small batch for later on tonight and that was the big batch so that is why that is what they so this might be difficult with uh one hand so you get your turkey baster and you try to suck up all the black worms you possibly can that's quite a lot of black worms you see right And the fish know what's coming because they know what's coming when they see. So the black worms in there are realistically for the bigger fish. So again, you'll see all the fish swarm. Try and see if I can catch some some images of the uh, venture while we're walking around here. Can see what there he is there. Right at the top, let me see if I'll give some specifically to him. So there you go, there's him eating. Yeah, he's settled in nicely, uh, really nice fish. Uh, Alright, so we're going to go down here to my Elizabethy Red, there he is there. Again, same thing, he knows what's happening when he sees this turkey baster. He's been fed from it numerous times. It brings out their best colours as well, because they kind of uh, show off a little bit, which is pretty cool. Okay, we're going to start over at the rack, so I always start with Percy first. Should be enough for the two of them. Okay. Go and go off and do Mars and Venus. Same thing. They love these guys. So. They get a bit confused because it comes out of the air, which is a bit strange. But once they're in the ground, they, they kind of hunt them throughout the rest of the day. It also has really good foods for when I'm giving you away for that long period of time during the day so that they get enough, they can keep eating throughout the day. Okay, this guy, which looks like an empty tank, but I promise you it isn't. Bit of trouble with my equipment there. strange that neither of them come out for the food yet because they're normally quite active to the food I'll try and get some more footage of these guys and I'll put it uh, so you guys can see them eating okay so just so you know I'm not going to be feeding these guys um, just because I, I don't want to stress them any more than they already are so I, I'm just leaving it for the next couple of days uh, to let them heal uh, and then I'll then I will uh, 
I'll feed them after. So we're going to go over to Apollo now. Uh, just give me a second to remove the uh, lid. Lid removed, and if you can see, he knows it's feeding time, and so does she. So. I mean, even the pencil fish love these guys. They just munch them until uh, they, they like split them in half. So it's really cool to watch them eat these guys. Aphrodite doesn't seem that interested in them at the moment, but she'll hoover them up later. That, that's just what happens with these two. And here we'll just eat his filth and he's full. down to the uh, youngers. seem more interested in uh, each other than they do in the food. Uh, I think he's spotted some now. Uh, you can see from this color that she still is uh, caring for the fry because of the coloration in her body. And she's trying to defend the fry from the dad. So maybe I should have put the, the food in at the back. I have been putting the food in at the back the rest of the week. And the good thing in live food is that if they're not hungry, then they, they just eat it later. That's just the, the simple as it is with these guys, really. So we're just going to move on because they don't seem interested in the food at all at this present moment in time. He's going to be big O and his female, so let's just feed these guys. they got a nice big helping because they've got the rest by the looks of things. Again, the same thing, he gets a bit nervous and wary of them they come from the sky but then once they kind of set into the sand and stuff he he's all over it and by the looks of her color she's ready or almost ready for another batch of fry um which is a bit concerning because i'm trying to, to, to power down these production because they've had um four batches of fry within a month which I, i'm concerned will burn her out again I'm not worried about them not being interested in the food because they'll just eat it later. So that was the feeding of blackworms. Um, it's quite straightforward really. Just make sure you wash them thoroughly. Uh, now we're going to move on to the brine shrimp uh, and feed all the smaller fish uh, and the ocelot's gold. So I don't feel the ocelot's gold um, blackworms because I don't feel like that's conducive to the diet. It's not something they would eat in the wild, so I don't feed them that in um, in the aquarium. So um, I'm gonna feed them brine shrimp, and they love it anyway. You'll see once I feed them. Okay, so the brine shrimp is now all rise to the top. So you just get your... Turkey based that and suck as much as you can out from the top, because then you get just pure brine shrimp. Uh, so I'm going to feed a little bit down to here first of all because these guys, there are a lot of smaller fish that uh, don't eat the uh, batworms and you'll see that they'll just swim through and eat as much as they possibly can. This is the Ben Shire, here. He's looking really good. I'm really pleased with him. Uh, and then we're going to go over to the Ocelot's Gold now. You have to put it down so I can remove the lid and then I'll come back. Alright, so here we go. I'm 
want to see, they absolutely love it. All right, let's go move on and feed the uh, the second stage grow out. Oh, I've used it all. Let's get some more. So these guys have settled in really nicely to this tank and they just will just eat all day long and, to, and they're just growing really well. It's really pleased with their growth once they've been into this tank. And it's, it get, uh, what I've decided and why I've decided to uh, do it this way rather than in the grow-out totes from now on is just purely from the side, being able to see the side view of them growing. Um, it, it, it's just more satisfying for me uh, and it makes more sense to be quite honest. Uh, so let's go and feed the uh, first stage grow-out. Right, so here we go, first stage grow out. Don't need as much for these guys because they're still very young, very small. But the same thing is true with these guys, they will just eat, 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 and that's what you want them to be doing really. All you really want them to be doing is eating and growing, to be honest. So the last thing I'm going to do is just squirt the rest of this into the, the big black grout tote because those guys, those four, will just eat it. Uh, and then that sums up feeding. So literally I'll just squirt the rest in here. Get a little bit more because that didn't seem like enough for the, those guys that are in there because I don't know how many of those guys are in there. I think we've got the squirt. Uh, and we've also got to feed the... Uh, what's lots of gold babies? Now they don't need a lot because again, they're still only a few days old. Yeah, and there are still some in here with the mum. Uh, and as you can see, she's still chowing down on all of the baby brine that are in there. So, you, you know, baby brine is a super food. Uh, feed it as often as you can, as long as your bigger fish will eat it. So a lot of my bigger fish won't eat it. So like uh, Apollo won't eat it and um, Mars won't eat it and Percy won't eat it. Um, the Rams will, Set will, Osiris won't. And, and most of these guys will. Um, this guy won't. Erebus won't. But if you can feed it to your larger fish, feed it to your larger fish because it's really good for them. So let me just. Alright, so here we go. So literally, just I just do a little squirt over here. A little squirt over here. And then that's them fed, really. I never really check to make sure that they're feeding because they are feeding all the time. Um, I just change this water once. Uh, once every day, so that's why I keep this guy here for that's the chlorinated tap water. Um, and it's really simple, really. Okay, so that sums up another week in the fish room and another live feeding. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at and join me on Thursday for a how to video.